Hello, and uh, welcome to the next uh, interview that I'm doing with the artists that are, some of the artists that are participating in the Riverdale Art Walk. So Riverdale runs from the 18th and 19th of June, so uh, it's coming up soon, and we're certainly hoping for fabulous weather. In total, there are 170 artists participating, 150 will be in the park, and all of them will be online. We just have an additional 20 online, which, is, um, which will allow you to shop from anywhere, so pretty excited about that. Um, so I, uh, it's one of those fabulous places where as an art collector, you can go in and you can meet the artists, you can talk to them about their inspiration, understand a little bit more about their process in a way that's really kind of a nice, safe environment. Um, there is everything from photography to abstract painting, fiber arts and sculpture, a little bit of everything. So that's pretty awesome too. And today I'm going to be talking to Stephen Rose. So he is one of the artists who is participating in this uh, year's Riverdale Art Walk. So I'm just going to bring him on and uh, what he's up to. <coughs> and hopefully we will see him soon. Oh, decline my request. Okay. So let's see. Um, I will invite him again. Oh, yeah. We always have a couple of little tech issues just to keep it all exciting. So hopefully, Stephen, you'll be able to join me. Hello. 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 <laughs> I'm, okay, how are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you, Stephen? I'm good. Fantastic. <laughs> good. Yeah, I know. You know, there's always a couple of little tech glitches. That always seems to be a natural part of these Instagram live conversations. Yeah, yeah bear with me. It's my first time doing one of these live uh, Instagram video things. So uh, I apologize oh. for my... Uh, <laughs> you know. No, you're, you're totally good. You're totally good. Okay. So, yeah. So um, we're very excited to have you as part of the, uh, the juried Riverdale Art Walk. And I know you've participated in a couple of our uh, shows before, but uh, it's always nice to have familiar faces back. Um, yep. Maybe you can talk a little bit about, I know I was on your website a little bit, and you're, you obviously do uh, pen and ink as well as watercolor and wood carving. So maybe right. you can talk a little bit about kind of how you got started and what your process is. Well, first of all, uh, regarding the wood carving, I don't do that anymore. I used to do competitive uh, display carving where you – where you actually create a piece, whatever it may be, and it's on display and, it, and it's and it's a competitive environment. Where you, oh, wow. where you win, uh, yeah, where you win money and prizes and all that type of thing. But I did that for about oh maybe ten or fifteen years, so it was time to move on from that. So my main focus now, and where it has always been in my artwork and my drawing, and uh, and that's that's where my uh, main focus is these days. So. Um, so are, you painting, uh, are you painting watercolor then, or um, pen and ink, or acrylic, or what's your medium? Well, it's I guess it's considered mixed media, uh, watercolor and pen and ink, and you and the use of acrylic ink as well in the pieces that I do. So um, yeah, like I mean, it, it could be you know everything related to the scope, and that's where uh, that's where my inspiration comes from when I do my art. So mm. uh, you know. Having been exposed to that environment since the age of three years old, and <laughs> you know, you know, you certainly know your way around. Like I mean, you know, our own cottage environment and all the environment around the Skoka, and also the Niagara Escarpment from Hamilton all the way up, all the way up into Georgian Bay. Right. So my inspiration is infinite. <laughs> So that's the wonderful thing about being inspired by nature, right? Like you've got lots of, yeah. uh, lots of options. So is there yeah. anything in particular about the Muskoka uh, region that you're trying to capture? Is it um, kind of the energy or the representation or the colors or a little bit of everything or your well, emotional it, connection? Yeah, it, it's, it's all of that. It's the emotional connection. It's the energy. It's the colors. It's the, it, it's everything to do about the changing environment um, because any given day, you know, you have a beautiful sunny day, 10 minutes later it could rain. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you'll see the most gorgeous sunset or sunrise you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's just it's just endless. Like, I mean, uh, I can't say enough how lucky that I am that, 
that uh, my parents, when uh, they purchased the property back in the, I guess the early, late 50s, early 60s, um, my parents, and I, I guess there was maybe, I guess 10 or 12 other people on our lake were the first original purchases of land up there when the, <laughs> the government of the Crown decided to open the land up for development. And uh, it's too bad I wasn't, you know, older at that time, uh, you know, doing my artwork because, you know, it, it's just stunning. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I can't say enough. <laughs> so, and do you, do you do plain air painting? Like, do you go up there and paint uh, in the environment or do you do photographs or what's your process to actually um, capture yeah, it? Yeah, generally, like, I'm a big hiker, so I'm always carrying my camera with me to take reference photographs for my artwork. And uh, that's where it generally starts. Uh, with finding a piece that's um, is going to be interesting for the specific technique what, what I do, whether it's pen and ink or a combination of both, or all all different media that I use altogether. And um, uh, again, I, I can't I just can't see enough of how inspirational it is up there because you could be hiking for five minutes and then all of a sudden you stop. And you look around, and there's ten different things I could sketch or photograph. Right. Um, you know, but the, but the hard part of my work is, I think, is actually finding the subjects that people can relate to. Um, I try to weed out a lot a lot of those common things that uh, you know a, a, an artist will do, like a typical landscape that. Um, you know, okay, it's common to somebody, but what about the uncom uncommon things that uh, people generally don't see beyond their college boundaries? And and that's where that's where my main focus is. And uh, you know, I get a lot of comments regarding my artwork that they have a personal connection to it. They have a personal feeling because they know where the area is. Mm -hmm. They know what it looks like. And they're, oh, it's great, you know, and I got comments, oh, that's just beautiful. And, uh, you know, I've been there and, oh, I know the area very well. And then all of a sudden that results in a sale. And that's, and, you know, I'm doing my job right, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that that totally speaks to uh, an artist trying to create an emotional connection for their, yeah. between their work and the, for the person who buys it, which is so, yeah. so important. And I agree, like, you know, my cottage as well, it's uh, north of Kingston as well. So it's the same kind of Canadian um, shield type environment and it's a combination of being very rugged but really just you know stunningly beautiful with the clean lakes and yeah yeah yeah, yeah there's, you know there's nothing nothing better than getting up in the morning early enough with your camera and just going maybe a mile or two in your small little boat <laughs> when there's no boat traffic in the morning and finding a, a beautiful reflection on the water uh, to take a picture of it's just uh, it's priceless. <laughs> mm -hmm. And do you find you have a certain place that is kind of very inspirational that you keep kind of going back to and keep exploring and re-communicating? Um, I, I've done a lot of work up in, um, up in the Owen Sound area, Tobermory. Now that's way up, that, that's way up, you know, way up in the part of Georgian Bay. It's about a four hour drive here from the city. Obviously from cottage country, it's probably half that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, that's an event that kind of has to be planned for because, you know, you have to go, if you're going to stay overnight, where you're going to stay, all, all this stuff. Enough. But yeah, it, it always draws me up there because there's, there's all, there's so many, so many things you can see. Um, and once you're on the Bruce trail up there, it's just, uh, you, you know, <laughs> you stop one, you stop one, one at one point and you can take pictures all day from one point and, you're done, and then you can go right. back home, and, you know, <laughs> and then start working on those photographs. Yeah, uh, those reference photos. So, and so, how do you how do you start? So you start off with your blank piece of paper. Like, what are you? What's your process for kind of figuring out? Like you were saying before, what you're going to capture and what you're going to um, kind of leave out, or you know, to create some some kind of uniqueness to the space. Yeah, generally, my my process. You know, I start with the, the reference photograph that I take. And then I take a little time taking a look at that photograph and I try to weed out anything in that photograph that's going to lead your eye out of the actual piece. It could be a spray branch or something that's, or something that's 
kind of out, out of out of out of whack. That um, you know, from our artistic license point of view, wouldn't work. Mm-hmm. So I may add something a little, you know, or take something away, or change change the coloring a little bit. And then from that point, once I get that done, I, I'll uh, you know start sketching it out. Um, you know, basically just rough sketches, and then I'll start working out colors. Uh, you know, I use you know my uh, ink intense pencils and watercolor pencils, which are water soluble. And if it's a pen and ink drawing, it's just basically doing a a graphite sketch with a pencil and shading in all the uh, the values. And then once that's done, you're happy with it. Then you just start on the ink work, and before you know what it, it's done, so, uh-huh. you know. I mean, depending on how much detail you want to put into the piece, it could take a couple of days or it could take a week, sometimes two weeks. Right. Um, you know, um, as an example. Um, I can quickly show you. I don't know if you can see this very well. Hold it up a little bit higher. A little higher? Yep, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a a photograph, reference photograph I took last year at a place called uh, Torrance Barrens in Bala. It's a, it's a, I guess a public park. Um, That was my reference photograph. And then from there, this is just an example of uh, how I, you know, work out the colors. <laughs> mm, that's cool. That's with, uh, and that's with acrylic inks and uh, watercolor pencils and pen and ink pencils. All those colors are water soluble, or you can leave right. them on the actual page as as they are. And then from there, again, just an example example from that photograph, I'll start working out individual sketches. Uh, this sketch is just indicating the flow of the water right. in pen and ink. All those black areas are just representing the actual ground of the land or the trees around. But I was just focusing on just uh, sketching out the uh, the water in pen and ink. Yeah. So that's kind of generally my, my process. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. Sometimes it takes a little while to get uh, the way that you wanted it to be. And then from there, you, you work start working on the final piece. Right. That's everything set in place. So it's kind of like a methodical process. It's not mm-hmm. one of these systematic things where some artists will just slap a whole bunch of paint on and just go for it, just go for it. My right. work is a little bit more, I don't know, I guess refined, I guess. If that's a, or structured, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, so so. Um, if people are coming to visit you at the Riverdale Art Walk, what should they expect to see in your tent? Well, you're going to expect to see two of these pieces right behind me. And they're uh, framed, right? These are, yeah, these are two framed pieces, yeah. Um, if I can pan the, the camera around here just a little bit, you'll get uh, there. <laughs> yeah. This piece here. Yeah, that's a... Uh, Again, a landscape piece I took up on up on our lake, and uh, that's a little bit of play on the abstract. I don't normally do that, <laughs> but I thought it would be a little different to try that. Uh, I call that pines on fire, but uh, normally you'll never see pine trees that color. You know, the bright oranges and stuff like that. But I thought it had right. a bit of a twist, and the reflections in the water. Are done in uh, pastel, cool. which is something I, I've used a, a couple times before, and it works quite well. And uh, and uh, I think it turned out quite nice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks good. So, are all of your pieces framed under glass? Uh, most of them, yeah, most of them. I have smaller pieces that are the originals that are unframed, um, but you know, it can get quite expensive. But you know, I, I give the people. I give people an option if they want to buy the original unframed, as they see it in my tent, then they have the option of doing that. Right. Um, but some of the larger pieces just look better framed, I think. Yeah, it plus it's easier better. for people to just buy and put it on their wall, too, as opposed to having to worry about getting it framed themselves. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And I think the black colored frame uh, fits most interior spaces. Yeah. And, you know, it's... Uh, in my opinion, anyway. But, mm-hmm. uh, 
Yeah. Okay, so, well, that's that's been awesome, Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I look forward to uh, yeah seeing these new pieces of yours at the show in a couple of weeks, less than a couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm getting excited about that because yeah, everybody's going to be there this time. I know, I know. Though. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. <laughs> yeah, for I know. sure. I, know. I just hope I hope it's not going to be as hot as it was last year. <laughs> Better hot uh, than yeah. windy and rainy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, yeah but you know, we're we're prepared for that anyway. So that's so right. Anyway, like you know, like some of the tools that I use, uh, if anybody wants to know, um, basically these are just a set of some of the. Um, watercolor pen and ink pencils that I use. They're just, you know, the water soluble, mm -hmm. pretty straightforward stuff. Um, color shapers I use. You might be familiar with with those. Maybe in your work, they come in different tips and different sizes. They're great for my work. Right. Um, charcoal pencils, of course. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my go-to, my uh, pen and ink pen. Which I have a series of them in different line widths. That's what the uh, if you can see the right the tip. Anyway, had those for years, and they still work great. Very expensive, but they still do the job that we we need them to do. Mm -hmm. And that's basically pretty much it. <laughs> okay, well that's yeah. awesome. We're out of time, so that works out really well. So yeah. look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks, and uh, continue yeah, doing yeah. your last minute touches. Yeah, excellent. I'm hoping to get maybe one more piece done, I hope, before that time. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, got to get back at it. <laughs> okay, well, I'll let you do back to your studio then. Okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks so much, Stephen. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. Bye, Doug.